And when we look at the theme of the assembly for this year, and I'll quote it, educate an African fit for the 21st century, building resilient education systems for increased access to inclusive and lifelong quality and relevant learning in Africa, end of quote. A number of issues come up before this theme. I will select a few. The first one is that the 21st century is characterized by digitalization and artificial intelligence, among other elements of technological development. And in this era, Africa must not be left behind. Secondly, in many countries of the global south, debt servicing obligations are higher than expenditures on education, health, and certain nation. And this is a factor that contributes to undermining the resilience of education systems in the countries of the global south. This challenge must be met so that we have got resilient education systems in our countries. Inclusivity is ed in education is not assured for many people across Africa to, due to various circumstances. And again, this challenge must be met. And in the world of today, where change is the only constant, Learning from the cradle to the grave is key to having a high quality of life. This means that lifelong learning is not a luxury, it's indispensable. And for children of today and tomorrow, education equips them employability, including self-employment, and this is of great relevance. And in addition, the quality of education in Africa must meet the minimum global standards. If its relevance is to go beyond our borders in this world of interdependence, countries will continue to depend on each other through migration even as we undergo the disruption of global supply chains and the consequent fragmentation of international trade. Having unpacked the theme, the task now is to brief you on how the Department of Economic Development, Trade, Industry and Minerals is contributing to this theme with a focus on human capital development. Let me begin by saying that the department has two directorates and one specialized agency. The directorates are economic development, integration and trade on one hand, and industry, minerals, entrepreneurship and tourism on the other hand. And the specialized agency is the African Minerals Development Center or AMDC. I will be do the briefing based on the broad themes of the departments as a whole with respect to human capital development. But before I do that, I will highlight a selection of important factors in social economic development related to human capital development. And these are the following. 15 points 8% of employees in Africa identify inadequate education of the workforce as a major constraint for their businesses. The issue of relevance comes into play here. In 2016, 45% of youth across Africa, or 10 African countries, felt their the skills were inappropriate for their current work. Out of these, 17 felt that they were overskilled 
and 28% felt that they were underskilled. While 38% indicated that the education was not useful in finding jobs. Again, the issue of relevance comes into play. Due to population growth and increasing life expectancy, Africa's work population, work age population is growing faster than formal employment opportunities. Africa has the world's youngest population with a median age of 19 years, compared to 30 for Latin America and 31 for Asia and 42 for Europe. Longer life experiences and higher overall levels of educational attainment further increase the share of the population participating in the workforce. Yet, the demand for labor does not match the growing supply. In 2020, over one in every African youth were not in employment, they were not in education, and they were not under training. Workers in the informal employment sector are often undereducated, while social skill gaps are prevalent in formal labor markets. The share of employment, uh, informal employment is likely to remain larger than that of formal employment. The African continent has a higher share of informal employment than any other world region. In 2021, the share of on account workers and contributing family members of the total population was 63.9%, compared to 33.9% for Latin America and the Caribbean and 4.9% for developing Asia. Africa's productive transformation is increasing the demand for fundament, functional, foundational, soft, and technical skills. However, Africa's productive transformation differs from the conventional growth patterns of developed countries or developing Asia. Unlike other re world regions, Africa's structural transformation faces low productivity in the economic factors that has, and these are not happened in other countries of the world. By 2022, Manufacturing accounted for only 11.8% of Africa's GDP, compared to 20.5% in developing Asia. Manufacturing also employed about 8% of the continent's workforce, compared to 12% in developing Asia, and as much as 19% in China. In contrast, most of Africa's labor force shifted from low productivity agriculture to services activities such as retail trade, often in the informal sector. Nevertheless, growth in sectors such as agro-industries and hot culture, ICT-based services, or tourism, provide significant opportunities for job creation and product transformation. From this selected example, it's clear that African countries needed to devise skill development policies that include their entire populations and identify specific opportunities for productivity-oriented skill development. To this end, the rest of the briefing, uh, briefing shows that we are doing what we are doing as a department to contribute to the theme. And the four broad themes that are covered here are the protocol related to free movement of people, right of residence, and right of establishment, as well as the issue of inclusive growth and sustainable development in Africa. The third one is on entrepreneurship, innovation, and digital transformation. And the last one is development of regional and continental value chains. With respect to the protocol on free movement of people, right of residence and right of establishment, I can state that the primary advocates for this protocol in terms of signature and application are our sister departments, and these are the Health, Humanitarian Affairs and Social Development Department on one hand, and the Department of Political Affairs, Peace and Security. 
However, we have also joined in the course because it is a key platform to creating an African customs union slash common market. In this respect, we see strong harmonization of qualification frameworks and skill accreditation programs as being foundational to labor market integration across Africa as we move towards creating a single African market starting with the African continent of retail area. Comparable qualification frameworks are key building blocks of labor market integration. Their absence, on the other hand, ushers in non-tariff barriers in the labor sector. In adequate for the signature of the ratification of the protocol on the free movement of people and right of establishment, we are also advocating for implementation of the African Union Continental Education Strategy for Africa, which is running from 2016 to next year. And this framework strategy stresses the need for continental qualification frameworks linked to regional and national qualifications frameworks to facilitate regional integration and mobility of graduates. We are fully aware that efforts towards harmonized qualification frameworks to facilitate quality assurance, skills accreditation, and credit uh, transfer mechanism require sustained country engagement, capacity, and resources. We are, however, encouraged by the fact that existing regional qualifications frameworks spearheaded by economic communities such as ECOWAS, SADIC, the East African Community, and IGAD, as well as non-governmental organizations such as the African Animal Gas Council for Higher Education and the Arab Network for Quality Assurance in Higher Education have led the groundwork for removing restrictions on intra-African mobility of skilled labor and creating comparable qualification frameworks that are moving us in the required direction. Now let me look at the theme of inclusive growth and sustainable development. The first aspiration of the African Union Agenda 2063, and I quote, is a prosperous Africa based on inclusive growth and sustainable development, end of quote. And one of the goals being followed under this theme is to have, and I quote, a well-educated citizenship or citizenry and skills revolution underpinned by science, technology, and innovation. In this respect, we are working in partnership with the African Development Bank and the Order NEPAD on a study on key actions to achieve inclusive growth and sustainable development in Africa. The study is planned to be rolled out in July this year. Some of the key actions in visas are human capital development to promote, among others, employability and productivity. Furthermore, we realize that inclusive growth and sustainable development are driven by, among others, savings and investments. In this connection, the study will also identify measures to raise rates of economic growth across Africa to promote inclusiveness, higher rates of savings, and higher rates of investments. A related activity is formulation of a strategy on export development and diversification. We plan to roll out this study by the end of this year. The strategy is geared towards strengthening Africa's exports to the rest of the world. Currently, Africa's share of global trade is less than 2.8%, and this is an indicator of the low levels of productivity across our continent. Increasing Africa's share of global trade anchored on value-added products will generate savings in the form of foreign exchange earnings. Export development and diversity will greatly contribute to, rise, to raising levels of savings and investments across Africa. We also have a program on enhancing capacities for domestic resource mobilization. Again, this can be a source of savings critical to investments in both human capital development and productive transformation. Now let me turn to the theme of entrepreneurship, innovation, and digital transformation. The Assembly of the African Union Heads of State and Government adopted the African Commodity Strategy in 2022. The strategy aims to promote value addition in the primary sectors of agriculture, mining, oil and gas, and energy. Fundamental, it also emphasizes that value addition should be at the source. Skills development is key to promoting value addition. Let me briefly mention some of the activities that we are undertaking in this respect. 
We have partnered with the African Capacity Building Foundation to commission a study on the establishment of an African Manufacturing Institute. This will be key to rapid development of industrial skills across Africa at all levels of the industrial value chain. In addition, we have partners with the African Business Council to promote skills development in the manufacture of jewelry. And again, in partnership with the Africa E-Trade Group, the Africa Export Import Bank, and Google, we are implementing the African Youth Startup Program to promote entrepreneurship, innovation, and employment across Africa. As part of the process of implementing the theme of the year, we are also advocating that African countries increase investments in research and development to boost innovation, as well as provide affordable financing to African youth startup operators. But Badwent is also contributing to the implementation of the Digital Transformation Strategy for Africa, which runs from 2020 to 2030. The strategy aims at creating an integrated, inclusive African digital society and economy that improves the quality of life of its citizens. In 2022, member states validated the African Union e-commerce strategy, which sets the tone for digital trade under the African continental free trade area. In addition, the department is doing a mapping exercise of e-commerce programs at regional levels in anticipation of the development of the roadmaps and guidelines. In line with the education to education, the African Minerals Development Center will be initiating sensitization programs for the African Green Minerals Strategy when it is adopted by the African Union Policy Organs this year. This strategy aims to leverage Africa's comparative advantage in strategic green minerals and renewable energy potentials. Through these programs, our aim is to raise awareness and cultivate consensus among stakeholders regarding the importance of sustainable mineral resource management and value addition. In addition, the African Minerals Development Center will be conducting online courses on tenants of the African mining vision, specifically focusing on the African minerals and energy resource classification and management system, and the Pan-African Resource Reporting Code. These courses aim to educate the youth and industry players on the correlation between value addition, wealth creation, and mineral resources, as well as classification. Furthermore, work is underway to support and expand initiatives of electrical vehicle and battery manufacturing, emphasizing the importance of retaining value addition within the continent. In this regard, the African Minerals Development Center, in a partnership with African institutions, is supporting initiatives such as the development of a center of excellence for advanced battery research and uh, in Lombashi, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The African Minerals Development Center is also partnering with the Pan-African Decarbonization Institute to promote leadership in the decarbonization value chain. It will contribute industry anchored. It will contribute to the development of an industry anchored on research in the development of the whole value chain, transforming energy systems and sectors globally, as well as ensure economic returns uh, from the process. The last theme is on development of regional and continental value chain. In this theme, the department, in collaboration with the International Trade Center, uh, launched the Value Chain Diagnostic Study to identify sectors with high potential for sustainable value chain development in Africa and the bottlenecks preventing businesses from realizing this potential. The study mapped 5,300 products as inputs or outputs and identified 415 continental value chains. In the context of the study, instead of importing rubber from Thailand for automotive industry, for example, the business community in Africa can source that from the Democratic Republic of the Congo or Cameroon. This brings me to the next point, and that is that the regional skills development programs are required to facilitate skills development in the development of regional and continental value chains. As I move towards con uh, concluding, let me say that we join our sister Department of Education, Science and Technology and, and Innovation in uh, advocating for increased investments in education and training programs related to our portfolio in order to increase investments in research and development 
skills development, global market access, as well position Africa to succeed in both the green transition and the fourth industrial revolution.